Ok boys, today I'll be showing you how to optimize your settings so you can PvP like a god. But first I want to update you with my new schedule. So basically you guys can expect a new video from me every Saturday as well as streams Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Sunday. So stay tuned. Ok, so the most important first step is to get your launch options. Most of you guys know about this already, but I'll go over it anyways. So you go to your Steam library, right click on Arc, then Properties and then set launch options. There you want to write dash D3 D10 and dash SM4. This basically makes your game run in DirectX 10 mode instead of DirectX 11 and shader model 4 instead of shader model 5. This will remove ground cutter and some other visual effects but it will make your game run with double the FPS. Ok so let's start changing the settings. First off we've got the audio section which is kind of personal preference but this is how I have it. Ok so you want your resolution scale all the way to the right because otherwise the image gets blurry. World tile buffers means how much of the world actually gets preloaded so that you don't stutter when you go in a new area and the chunk is loading. If you have a lot of VRAM on your GPU you should set this higher, if not lower it. Personally I have it at high. Next up we've got view distance. Uh, this basically means how far away objects like rocks and other stuff like that get rendered in. So this does not affect the distance that you see players from. So I would recommend setting it to medium in order to get that cheeky FPS boost and not get uh, rocks rendering in from super far away. Ok so the next one is anti-aliasing which honestly I don't see a big difference even if uh, I change it from epic to low. I don't know maybe you guys see it but in this game I don't think there's a big difference so I just leave that at medium. Post processing drops your FPS quite a lot and does not make the game look better so you want that always set to low. By setting terrain and general shadows to low you basically disable them and that's much better for PvP because first you don't want shadowy corners where people can hide and secondly it improves your FPS drastically so always keep those on low. So with textures the differences between medium and epic are not that big both in fps and visual quality so you can use either one of those or set it to low if you desperately need fps personally i keep mine at high ok so these sliders do not really matter because we've got the launch options enabled but i like turning them off anyways so sky quality, ground quarter density, ground quarter distance, mesh level of detail all the way to the left. Next up in this checkbox section you want motion blur, white boom and white shafts off because they actually hamper visibility and I turn the rest of these off just to give me a few extra FPS but that's optional. You want as little camera shake as possible so turn that all the way to the left and as much camera FOV as you can so all the way to the right. Now with the sensitivities I found that when I swipe them all the way to the left it's my default mouse sensitivity so I keep them all the way to the left. You should leave third person camera offset off because it makes your third person view with less FOV and just puts your character to the left which is kind of annoying in my opinion. But you do want to check disable third person camera interpolation because it should make your camera turn faster when you're riding a dyno. Moving on to the advanced section, you want to turn off melee camera animation because it just makes your camera shake when you're hitting something. Definitely turn off camera view bob because that makes your camera shake when you're just running around. You don't want that for sure. Turpidity effect makes it uh, so your screen goes purple in the edges when uh, your torpor is rising and for me that's distracting when I PvP so I turn that off. 
menu transitions make it so there's a delay between you hitting the open inventory button and your inventory actually showing up. So you definitely want to turn that off. You want to enable no tooltip delay as well because it just slows you down. Disable give default survivor items because that just fills your inventory with unnecessary junk when you spawn in. So usually when you're running around at night you gamma up but uh, doing that by typing in console is kind of slow and there's a better way to do it. So when you hop over to the key binding section you can actually set key binds to change your gamma easily. I have mine set to plus and minus on my numpad and I've got the second gamma value to 4 because that's where I like it at night and you can see just how easy it is to swap between gammas on the fly. Bind selfie cam to something convenient like left out because that's why K mode that you have to hold down the button so you can just check if someone is chasing you on the fly. You want to bind your number 9 SWAT to the scroll wheel click on your mouse and put something important there like parachutes or grapples. I say the number 9 SWAT because Pegus steal whatever is on your last SWAT and I've had one steal my parachutes during a terror fight. You want to bind your follow and unfollow whistles on something very convenient. I have mine on my two mouse buttons. So you can whistle your mount if you get unmounted or anything bad happens. Ok boys, that's it for the tutorial. We quadrupled our starting FPS as well as got some very important keybinds and settings in check. I hope you found it useful and I hope you subscribe for some more weekly content from ya boy. Goodbye!